In, the, in this lecture, we will uh, analyze a, spe a specific particular uh, molecular device uh, for a particular application, which is called uh, molecular quantum dot cellular automata. The uh, lecture is organized in these four parts. We will start with a brief motivation, and then we will analyze QCA theory to step forward to the specific molecular uh, implementation uh, with the aim of analyzing some particular molecules. So we all know that in the last years um, the amazing uh, scaling down of transistors has given a, a transistor density that allowed um, to pack um, a lot of functions in, a, say, in the same circuit and to achieve very high frequencies. But this has also been associated to a very huge power density. So what should we expect for the next years? Um, the International Technology Roadmap of Semiconductor confirms a dramatic increase in power dissipation. And if we think at, uh, briefly at the history of this, of the computation, we can uh, see that power dissipation has been a pick lock in all the fundamental technology changes. If we think the first, uh, uh, the first computers were just mechanical, and then we ha had a great uh, variation, a great uh, improvement with vacuum tubes. And there, the power uh, consumption was uh, the peak lock to move from one technology to the other. The same kind of step uh, was, uh, we, we assisted to the same kind of steps when from vacuum tubes we stepped to transistors. And uh, after that, to uh, integrated circuits based on transistors. So what do we expect from the next step? If we think that the future uh, leads to the um, concept of molecular transistors, we should expect uh, a charge transfer of, um, of one electron or few electrons, but uh, this will for sure um, give us uh, high device densities, frequency to which we cannot even think about now, and but the basic point is that this molecular transistor will still be based on conduction, on transfer of electrons from one node to another node of the transistor. So what about power density in this case? ITRS prediction, for example, uh, says that in a few years, we could expect to use a 9 nanometer gate length transistors, uh, which could assure a 1,000 million transistor per, centimetre, per, per uh, square centimeters for a frequency of around 30 gigahertz. So if this is more or less a reality to be expected, what if um, we step to a molecular transistor? Here we have some example of prediction. So if we increase again the, um, the density that could be expected with a molecular transistor with a frequency of this size 10 to the power of 11, the uh, number of watts per square centimeters can be uh, just pronounced with some difficulty. So the idea, the, the, the question is, are we going to compute or are we going to prove a, to test a new type of cooking style here? So the idea behind uh, quantum dot cellular automata is exactly that of change paradigm in order to reduce uh, power dissipation. So the idea is to use molecules no more as current switches, but to use them as structured charge containers. So the idea is to not, not having any more uh, flow of electrons, but just transfer of charge. So let's go to analyze the QCA theory. 
QCA um, have been introdu introduced by LAND a few years ago. And the idea is to have basic cells that can encode binary data, zero and one. Which zero, which one, depends on the type of encoding we decide to have. But basically the idea is to have these uh, cells organized in four dots, at least in the basic uh, organization of QCA, four dots, each able to include one electron. So if we think that in one cell we can just entrap two electrons, so for electrostatic repulsion, then only the diagonal are occupied by the electron. And so we can have all this case or this case. Using this idea, it is possible to place one near the other uh, basic cells and build logic functions. For example, the, uh, the one we have here is an inverter, organized using a few cells. And in this case, we have, so let's say that this is a 1, and you see that here we have a 0. What happens if we change the input? If we change the input from a 1 to a 0, then due to electrostatic interaction, we will have the passage of information without a transfer of uh, uh, electrons from one cell to the other. Just electrostatic repulsions force the uh, the second cell to move to a new state. And let's go on in a domino-like style. So we have the propagation of the information down to the last cell. This very principle can be used to build also other functions. For example, here we have a majority voter, which is basically the, ba the base cell used to uh, build all the uh, basic um, logic functions. This majority voter um, is based on three inputs, and the output will assume the majority of the value, the value uh, assumed by the majority of the inputs. For example, in this case, we have two inputs in uh, which occupies the in which the electrons occupy the, this diagonal, and this is the, in the opposite case. And so the output is forced exactly as input one and two. Typically, uh, this is the symbol used, and it is easy to analyze to see that if we force one of the input to zero or to one, we can uh, stick the um, logic function of the majority voter to a and or to an or gate. Clearly, having these gates and having the inverter, basically, we can build uh, whatever we want from the logic point of view. Still, we also need the propagation uh, without elaboration of the information, but just a propagation from one point to the other, so we need a wire. In this technology, a wire is not just a, an interconnect, uh, an interconnections like in CMOS, but still is a cell which holds the information and copy it to the nearby cells. And in the, using the same principle, we also need to uh, move information in two directions of the circuit, horizontal or vertical, and so in this case, a specific block, which is called the crosswire, is being uh, used. Because clearly, at least at this stage of the evolution of this technology, we don't have the possibility to, um, to use three-dimensional uh, interconnects. Using all these basic cells, then, it is possible to build even more complex structures, like in this case we have a uh, um, full adder based on several uh, wires, majority voters and inverters, and here um, in this part we have the um, very same structure but uh, with explicit uh, QCA cells. Now, uh, using this as a base, it is also possible to go up uh, in, in the design level and to go toward the architecture level. There, are, there is a big uh, research community working on this and uh, the problem related to this is, is that there is not a real 
connection to the physical behavior. Uh, the typical work in QCA literature is, okay, let's assume that some QCA cell exist and that works properly, and then it is possible to be uh, another uh, an arithmetic unit, up, even a processor. So clearly, this is not so realistic. A realistic QCA uh, structure and research associated to this structure should take into account real blocks and to, should uh, be able to model the behavior, uh, taking into account the facts and the real environment influence to do measurement and to refine the uh, models using measurements. At this point, it is possible to step uh, to a higher level and to def design and analyze, and analyze the circuits. So one of the most important realistic structure to be considered is the clock system. Uh, the concept of clock here is totally different with respect to what we normally consider a clock in digital uh, CMOS circuit. We call it a clock just because it's associated to a signal which steps up and down cyclically. So um, this is the reason why. But the idea behind that is different. So what's the problem? Uh, we have seen before a wire, for example, a few gates, a few cells. But the point is that even theory demonstrates that as soon as we reach a realistic temperature, for example, um, a wire length is uh, li limited because signal can be uh, can um, perceive a degradation from one point to the other. So we cannot think to have uh, wires of what of a length, whatever uh, um, that, whatever length. Uh, so this is one of the problem. The other problem is that to store the uh, information, we need a uh, strong barrier between the two states. But this barrier also um, is present when we want to change state. So if we want to change the state in the domino-like uh, way we have seen before, then uh, for sure we have to force a uh, big field uh, to, in order to change it. So how to solve these two problems? The idea is to organize the uh, circuit in zones. Each zone will embrace uh, a few cells and only a uh, uh, few cells per time will switch with the help of this clock. So the clock is an external signal which depends on the application, could be an electric field or a magnetic field. Um, and the aim of this field is to lower the cell potential barrier in order to reduce the uh, switching energy. At the same time, this uh, zone in which the field is applied should be uh, short enough in order to assure a correct uh, propagation, information propagation inside the same um, zone. So this clock signal is alternated to from a uh, zero one on off and so that the propagation is uh, and happens in a pipeline style to do this uh, to do that the cell must be a little bit more complicated not only the zero and the one should be encoded but also a null uh, a null structure a null state uh, must be assured exactly uh, when the uh, clock field is on. So how it works? If we have two cells um, nearby, then we will have, Im imagine that we have a uh, cell with a uh, uh, state stored, for example a one, and we apply uh, in the near cell the clock. So we have a null state. Uh, as soon as we release the clock, then the data is copied 
to the cell near, and so we have a uh, uh, one propagation. This um, is much more easy with respect to the uh, case without the clock, because in this state, we uh, st to step from this state to this sta uh, state, we need a uh, smaller energy. In the same way, we can see uh, how it works in case of a bigger uh, circuit, like, for example, the inverter. So we start with a one here, for example, as an input, and all the other cells um, are in the null state. So uh, as soon as we release uh, the clock, then the information is propagated. But uh, this time, the amount of energy ne necessary is slower, and also the information propagation is faster, and the, amount, the total amount of energy required is uh, smaller, and not only, also the correctness of the information propagation is assured, and a, a much longer wire or much longer propagation is assured. At least, this is what the theory um, from uh, Lent uh, describes. A similar structure, clearly again, in, um, um, in the majority water, where we have three stable input, we have the output in a null state, yeah, as soon as we uh, rise the clock, then the output assumes uh, the correct value. So this was just for one clock zone. Clock must be organized in phases. So uh, we can think at different zones where the, uh, each zone is well, uh, either in a switch phase or in a hold phase with uh, all the intermediate step from hold to switch or vice versa. So the propagation should occur in the way we are seeing. <clears throat> now, this is the theory. What about the real cases, the real implementation? There uh, has been uh, a real demonstration of QCA uh, in the past based on a metal implementation. Basically, the structure that we see here is based on metal, aluminum island, over silicon dioxide. And we have two dots here um, on the left, uh, which can be associated to the other on the right, by tunneling, and these other two dots are coupled to single electron transistors used as electrometers, basically. And <clears throat> uh, the transfer of information and the change of state from one to zero, from the left state to the right state, has been demonstrated in the past. Problem, this only works at few millikelvin temperature, so this is not realistic. Moreover, also, um, it is not so small. It's not a nano device. It's a, a micro device. In any case, the uh, principle has been demonstrated. After this, uh, semiconductor implementation has been um, tested because clearly technology is um, solid for what concerns semiconductor. So structures based on uh, gallium arsenide, for example, have been tested in which uh, several uh, structures, several layers of uh, silicon, silicon um, germanium or gallium arsenide are um, in interleaved and in which we have some dots that should be able to store um, charges. Now, this structure, again, um, has been tested, but results were not so successful because, again, it should work at cryogenic temperatures. It is highly defective, and especially if um, nano um, dimensions should be reached, uh, it has been proved that defects overcome the, the possibility of technology. So this implementation uh, has been basically uh, abandoned. Another uh, successful implementation that uh, is 
current, currently adopted nowadays is the magnetic one. So here the cell is a small uh, magnet uh, with a shape anisotropy in which the magnetization uh, assumes a stable state in one direction or in the other direction. And again, uh, in this case we need a clock, clearly in this case we have a magnetic uh, clock field which uh, is able, able to erase uh, the magnetization and uh, force the magnetization in a horizontal state. And as soon as the clock is released, then the magnetization goes up on da or down. This uh, type of implementation has been proved, as we uh, see here, um, and is promising, at least in terms of power dissipation. Clearly, as uh, it involves mag uh, magnetism, the, uh, the speed is not so amazing, but at least it can be done at room temperature and it can be used to, to, to demonstrate the uh, idea. And then there is the molecular implementation. Let's see how the molecular implementation can work. The idea is to have uh, molecules which have redox centers um, that can hold a logic state like the one we see here uh, on the right or in the left. And when a switching occurs, basically uh, one electron uh, tunnels from one point to the other, from one dot to the other, assuring a uh, transfer of charge, and this is the only transfer that uh, happens uh, in this uh, molecule. Clearly, if we have to consider also the clock, we st still need um, cells able to uh, assure the, the null state. So we need not only two redox centers, but also a third point uh, which uh, allows us to erase the uh, zero or the one. And at that point, if we think at how molecules can interact, the idea is to put one near the other and to um, and for the same principle as before, for electrostatic repulsion, the charge will be associated to, in, uh, will be uh, coupled in this way, in a di uh, diagonal way. Clearly, again, we should have the clock. So, uh, for example, in this case, we have an input uh, molecule and a cell influenced by that input using a um, uh, the electrostatic in interference, and in this case the clock is not applied. As soon as we apply the clock, in this example, in this vertical direction, then the information is erased. As soon as the clock um, is released, then the mo molecule will step again to the uh, stable state. Here we have a, an example in which we see a potential uh, wire of molecules um, and below the wires, uh, let's suppose to have small metallic or what is needed wires able to deliver such clock. For example, in this case, here we, uh, in, in the green um, line here we have the clock applied, so we have a, a null domain here, and uh, while in the other uh, zone, here we have a stable state because the clock is not applied, and in the middle there is a switching because at this point, as soon as we uh, release the clock from the right side, the information will be propagated from the left to the right. Okay, so this is the principle. The point is that uh, the clock must be applied properly. So uh, imagine that we have a bunch of molecules organized in zones, in this example three zones, 
and that we are able to force an input here with a molecule or with some, something else. In this case, the input is such that the charge is concentrated here in this point. Um, in the three zones, here we have this, this part, which is in the hole, then uh, you see that we have a correct um, organization of charge according to the input. In the same time, we have the other two zones in which we apply the clock that are in a null state, all uh, the two zones. Why? Because now, in the next step, we keep the clock in the third stage, in the third phase here, but we release the clock from the second. In this way, the molecules in the second block can step, can step from the null state to the, uh, to the data, using as input the molecules in the previous block, without being influenced by the molecules in the right part, which are in the null state. And so this principle is uh, used to propagate information not, no more from the first to the second part, but from the second to the third. For example, here we now put the, the clock in this uh, point, and the third um, stage uh, can switch using the molecules in the second as input. Now, um, as we apply the clock here, the molecules in the first stage are in a null state. We can, in this moment, change the input, but before releasing the clock from the first block, we have to apply it in the second, so we have to superpose the clock application in different stages, and only now we can um, release the clock in the first, and so the, first, the molecule in the first stage uh, can switch according to the input. So this is the way in which we need to apply the clock, and so it means that we need molecules that can be organized in zones, and also we need uh, signals and wires that can be organized in different parts uh, to which we uh, force clocks in dynamically in this way. Now, to, to complete the general description of molecular QCA, Clearly, we need to be able to apply this clock to write in a data and also to read out the value. So this is still a research, uh, at a research point. No real um, uh, implementation has been done, uh, apart from some examples that, that uh, I'm going to mention later. In general, the Possible clock in this case could be an electric field clearly uh, delivered through specific electrodes, but these electrodes clearly must be um, uh, small enough and precise enough to do what we have seen before. For the writing, again, it is possible to think at electric field applied to even not merely just one molecule, but at least to a bunch of molecules. This bunch of molecules can be used as an input toward the next molecules in the next stage. And for what concerns without, one possibility is to use a single electron transistor to sense the uh, charge difference. To summarize, which are the pros and the cons of this uh, molecular technology? Well, clearly we are talking about very small structure, around 2 nanometers or even a little bit more, but in any case very small, and this can assure very huge densities. Um, it has been demonstrated in theory that they can work not at cryogenic temperature, they can work at room temperature, and so this is clearly one good point with respect to the other implementation we have mentioned before. The frequency that can be reached is bigger than one uh, theraerts, around 10 theraerts at least in the optimal conditions. And the associated power dissipation is very small as no conduction is associated to the uh, information propagation. Clearly, the data depends on the, on the specific implementation, the real data. But in any case, theory demonstrated that a 
uh, very tiny power dissipation is to be expected with respect to previews uh, to the other uh, possible implementation. And the other important uh, advantage is uh, the fabrication potentiality. We don't need any more uh, lithography, but because we can rely on, on self-assembly of uh, layers of uh, molecules. Now, clearly, we also have cons. The problem is that all what we have mentioned is true in theory, but still uh, no prototype have been fabricated yet, just some attempts, as mainly because technology currently is still not adequate to manipulate single molecule or group of molecules. And associated to this, but worth pointing out, is the difficulty to sense the value. Even though if uh, you are able to build a wire of molecules and to force an input, maybe to force a clock, how do you read? Because the charge associated to a single molecule is very small. So it's not easy to read the value. One experimental setup has been uh, done uh, in a few years ago, but not based on a single mo molecule, based on a film of molecule, molecules that um, later we will see a little bit more into taste, based on uh, iron and ruthenium, on a film of molecules uh, organized with uh, ruthenium uh, on a silicon substrate and with the iron kept with mercury, and um, uh, using a, a particular organization of electric field applied between the substrate and the mercury, a uh, um, clear charge difference has been uh, analyzed uh, when the uh, voltage applied uh, was varied between the positive and the negative. So, this means that the uh, charge transfer can be used, can, is true, is a, a real uh, idea and can be uh, effectively used for computation. Still, uh, the um, transfer of information between one cell and the cell nearby has to be demonstrated. So, this was the previously done experimental setup uh, another possible experimental setup that uh, is, um, in, in, or is uh, now um, in the way of being organized, especially uh, the Politecnico di Torino, is based on um, several steps. First, uh, organize a few molecules available under and put them under an electric field and first observe their behavior using STM or AFN. Then find an experimental setup uh, based on nanogaps that can be uh, really done here uh, in order to selectively apply the clock or using again the nanogaps to uh, not, not only as a clock, but also as an input. And uh, clearly, the next step is to analyze, to find a way to analyze how the charge is distributed, basically to uh, be able to read out uh, the value. Clearly, it is important to simulate this structure. And so many simulations have been done to analyze the behavior of particular molecules under the influence of electric field uh, ap applied by means of uh, nanogaps. So the idea is to use nanogaps that uh, can be built in, uh, in this university and that, uh, exploiting the fact that these nanogaps are around 3-4 uh, nanometers and so uh, small molecules can be placed here in the middle and so uh, an electric field can be applied uh, between the two uh, electrons. So uh, this is a section view, clearly theoretical, uh, of how the structure can be built, uh, whether the um, basic um, substrate here is gold 
or silicon dioxide and uh, the gap is based on silicon or on gold depends on the type of molecule available. But clearly the molecule must be uh, selective in terms of the fact that, they, that it must be um, connected to the substrate only where we have the gap so that there is not a direct influence uh, between the, the, the gap, uh, the um, electrode and the molecule. The electrode is used just to force an electric field all around the molecule. And this is how it should work. This is uh, um, ongoing work and uh, we hope uh, very soon to demonstrate this step. Now let's analyze a few uh, molecules and, and their property that, the properties that can be uh, used for this type of application. So which are the characteristics that we expect to have? <clears throat> Clearly we must have a good charge confinement uh, on the dots because we must be sure that even with a temperature uh, we don't lose the information. Then, uh, after we uh, immobilize the uh, molecule on a substrate, the geometry of the dots must be stable. Dots must not, uh, should not move around because otherwise electrostatic interaction could, uh, and electrostatic properties could change. So the molecule must be fixed once it, uh, it is on the substrate. The other clear important feature of the molecule is that it should allow for clocking and that uh, clocking means the molecule, uh, the state of the molecule must be erasable when the clock is applied. <clears throat> so the first molecule uh, that has been proposed in the literature is the one we see here. First proposed, proposed for other purposes, uh, purposes by uh, Aviram and then proposed and used by, studied by Lent and his co-workers a few years ago for uh, this type of application. It is called a 2 allyl butane based on two allyl groups here. Basically, it is based on, uh, they, the two groups are based on uh, methylene and on vinyl, uh, the two allyl, and they are connected by one butyl group in the middle that uh, works as a bridge between the two allyl. Every allyl has two occupied bonding and one non-bonding level, so one molecule can tunnel from one to the other end of the molecule and this assures the two-dot behavior. <clears throat> it has been uh, analyzed uh, and simulated using uh, Gaussian, and uh, simulation demonstrated that the homostates are well localized in the two allyl group. They can be in these two or delocalized in the two alleles, but in any case in the two ends, in the two uh, extreme part of the molecules. So depending on uh, the nearby molecules, the electron can go in one or the other zone. Um, as a whole consideration after the works proposed by Lent, basically this molecule um, shows a very high polarizability uh, provided that one unpaired electron is present and can be mobile between the two allyl groups. And for the same reason, though, uh, it shows good mo uh, dipole, dipole moment. Uh, if a study is done uh, forcing a, a charge, uh, just a um, small charge, uh, used as an input to, in order to mimic an input molecule. And so the uh, dipole molecule, uh, moment is a good one and demonstrate um, behavior like the one of a CMOS inverter. Input, one input means zero uh, output. However, it does not uh, show a possible null state 
and so clock cannot be used here. It's only a theoretical uh, uh, molecule, and moreover, it cannot be uh, immobilized, at, uh, at least in, in the present condition. The same, uh, the, a similar idea is uh, the basis of the three allyl case molecule, in which the allyl type is exactly the same, but this time three dots are, um, are available, almost identical, and so uh, the, the fact that we have three dots al as, um, allows to force a clock. And simulation demonstrated that, again, good uh, homostructure are uh, localized, well localized in the allyl, and also the um, electrostatic distribution uh, shows these good properties. Again, this is a molecule that uh, cannot be uh, immobilized and still has not been synthesized and has, from a practical point of view, many issues. The other molecule that has been proposed is the one I mentioned before, uh, based on iron and uh, ruthenium. In this case, uh, there is not a symmetry between the two dots because they are based on iron and ruthenium, and if the charge is localized in one of the two parts, then we have a zero and a one or a one. Here uh, we see um, how the, the, the real molecule is, very complex, where we have a ferrocene basically here and a ruthenium structure here. But the property of this molecule is that it is realistic, it has been really synthesized, and also it has a part here that can be used to um, immobilize the molecule to a substrate. By means of simulation, we see that uh, homo are well distributed, well localized in the two parts, uh, even though uh, it is clear that they are not uh, equal. So uh, it means that there is uh, an asymmetry between the two parts and also this by the, uh, from the computational point of view, the delay point of view in switching and how the molecules can influence one another um, could uh, in increase, could, could give some uh, issues. In any case, it has been um, used for demonstration, so a film of molecules have been uh, fixed and immobilized on, over a silicon substrate uh, in a vertical position. As I said before, a um, cap of mercury ab above has been connected to the ferrocene here, and a uh, capacitance has been measured um, has be, uh, as we have seen before. So depending on the voltage, the positive or negative voltage applied between the two electrodes here, um, the charge was uh, either negative or po um, were clearly different, and so the charge variation between the states were clearly different between the two uh, situations. Still, this molecule, even though it uh, gave uh, this, this good result, it has been uh, ab abandoned, not uh, used it to study the properties and the feasibility, but still can, uh, has not given a demonstration, a clear demonstration of the fact that one molecule can influence the other if we put them nearby. They just, as a film, give a, a good charge um, transfer behavior. Uh, another uh, molecule proposed for this uh, structure is based on four dots uh, of uh, ferrocenes. And here we see the structure, um, and this is the balloon stick structure, more uh, easy to ana be analyzed. So we have four ferrocenes here around, and one cobalt structure in the middle to work as a bridge between uh, the four dots. And here we, we see um, uh, a section view. Basically, uh, this is a, a, just a connection block, but hopefully it could work as a, a, a basic block to hold the null state. This molecule, studied by uh, co-workers, again, of uh, Lent, uh, demonstrate a good B-stable behavior in the diagonal. And also, the influence from one molecule to the other has been analyzed, so which is the interaction. 
and using uh, another molecule, uh, one molecule as a driver and one molecule as a uh, receiver uh, and changing the uh, charge in uh, the driver, then uh, the charge of the receiver has been analyzed. And so we see that uh, we have a good uh, property here because with uh, um, negative charge value, we have also uh, well-defined negative uh, charge V localization for the driver, for the receiver, sorry, and the same in the other side when the uh, applied charge is positive. So the two curves here are um, represents two behavior uh, with different temperature. Clearly, at uh, zero Kelvin, the behavior is ideal, but in any case, we have a good um, behavior also if we are working at room temperature. <clears throat> Still, that molecule has been studied only in theory. Uh, more recently, uh, an interesting molecule um, based on three uh, ethylene group has been pro uh, was proposed by Lent. It is called a decatrine and is based on carbon-carbon uh, bonds, uh, all uh, similar. It represents just a three dots molecule and um, it showed a good separation between the states and also shows a possible null state. Basically, the two extremes are the two zero and one points, and the, the one in the middle is the null state. Still, it is theoretical in the sense that it cannot be stabilized on a substrate, at least in this, in this, uh, uh, as it is, and in any case, uh, some problems from the synthesis point of view uh, have been noted. A new molecule that has been proposed in literature very recently, and it has also been engineered and, and uh, synthesized re in reality, is uh, called a bisferrocene. Here we have the real formulation. And we basically have two ferrocenes block separated by a carbazole block in the middle. Um, this allows for two dots for the zero and one state and one part for the null state. This molecule is a realistic one and can be uh, stabilized on uh, a substrate. In fact, it comes also with a tile block here that can be connected to a um, substrate. This has been done uh, on a gold, gold substrate, for example, and this is an STM uh, view of the molecule, and at least even uh, without any field applied, we can see uh, the two blocks with a third here in the middle uh, that shows a good uh, structure here, very um, also regularly uh, organized with respect to the um, lactis in the substrate here, and it seems to be a very promising molecule. For what concerns the simulation, uh, it has been analyzed also by, uh, in our university, and using two different uh, clock fields. One clock field applied vertically uh, to uh, emulate the clock, and another uh, horizontally to force the switch between one state and the other, zero, one, and vice versa. So, how to simulate it? Because clearly we need, uh, in this case, not only to analyze ab initio uh, behavior, but also uh, dynamic behavior. We need to simulate different um, different uh, uh, fields, horizontal and vertical, and also fields that should be organized spatially in different, uh, in different zones. So simulation run were based both on Gaussian and on Material Studio, uh, which allows for two uh, electric fields in two directions. Still, this, both these two simulators only uh, allow the static electric field, but in any case, it's a good starting point. So, uh, without any um, 
electric field applied, uh, the simulation um, pointed out a uh, delocalized HOMO, partially localized in the carbazole. And this seems a good point um, for what concerns the null state. On the contrary, if an electric field is applied um, in the switch direction, here we see a top view of the mo molecule, then we see that the HOMO are well localized in the two ferrocenes, uh, showing that a, a good localization of charges is reached and so it can be it can encode very well zero and ones. Another interesting um, information can be reached if the charge is analyzed. In this uh, sketch we see all the dots, all the atoms in the molecule um, and the color uh, represents the charge associated to uh, each atom when we have a, a, a switch uh, electric field. In this case, we don't have any clock applied, so no clock in this direction, but just a switching field in this direction. Um, in this case, we see that uh, we have a good localization of charges. Still, we have a partial um, dipole inside, internally inside the ferrocene, but in any case, as a whole, the two uh, dots show a good charge localization. And if we move the um, clock from one direction to the opposite direction, we see that we have a good uh, localization and motion of the charges. The other point is this. Up to now, we have seen just qualitative values. Okay, the charge is well distributed, but how big is that charge? Because we say that we need a good localization and stability of the charge localization. So as this is a totally new a molecule that also must be analyzed not only from a static but from a dynamic point of view, the, um, the point is which basis set to be used to analyze it, to optimize it, to, be to better represent and model it. Uh, which functional, which type of charge to analyze the Mulliken, the Hirschfeld, the ESP char uh, charge model, um, modeling. So we, uh, in um, our university, demo uh, tried many uh, simulations on this point and compared the two simulators. Uh, clearly, it is not easy to uh, make a, the correct choice, so one um, goes to down to the uh, drop of, to, a, to a drop of water first to see which is the best way to um, analyze things, even though clearly uh, our, uh, the other molecule, the bisphenosine molecule, is much more complicated. So uh, from the analysis of the water, we see basically uh, here the charge for the carbon um, and for the oxygen and for the two uh, um, hydrogen atoms, and what we see is that the ESP um, charge analysis is much more stable and not dependent on, on the type of functionals used to approximate um, the behavior of electrons inside the molecule and also does not depend on the basic uh, set. On the contrary, uh, using the same simulator, which is Gaussian, the Malikan charge shows a variation um, depending on the type of uh, other approximation uh, used. So ESP is, seems much more um, reliable. A similar result has been found also using the other simulator, which is Material Studio, uh, which in any case um, shows a better stability for the ESP, even though uh, a higher sensibi sensitivity is um, reached here. A similar comparison is done here for uh, the bisphenosine. So here we have the charge distribution for all the molecules in, uh, in all the atoms in the molecules, so starting from carbon to uh, iron, again carbon. They are just in a uh, random order here. So here we see the charge of the uh, iron here and here, and the different colors are for the different type of charges. So we see a pretty uh, big variations depending on the type of analysis. And the same is present if we cha change the clock applied, so the vertical 
clock applied. In this case, we have no clocks. Here we have a positive clock in the vertical direction, so something is changing, but not too much. On the contrary, if we have a negative clock, then we have a very uh, huge variation for the ESP uh, charge. On the contrary, the Hirschfeld um, charge analysis uh, is very similar to the previous one, and Malikel is in the middle. So um, the um, charge analysis that seems in the same time stable and also gives more information is the ESP that is the one chosen for this type of analysis. Another in, uh, interesting information then is no more to analyze the charge on the single atoms, but to group using functional blocks in the molecule, the, the charge. And so here we have, without any clock applied, the charge analysis uh, of the blocks like the ferrocene, the two ferrocenes, so the red and the green are the charge, uh, just sum, uh, summing, uh, found, summing up all the charges in uh, the atoms of the two ferrocenes. Then the blue is uh, for the carbazole, and the other are for the other blocks inside uh, the molecule uh, that are less important. What we see is that even though in this case we have a, clock, a zero clock, if we change the electric field, positive or negative, in the horizontal direction, we see that the other f blocks basically are not influenced. The charge remains stable. On the contrary, the uh, charge of the two uh, ferrocene group are very well uh, influenced and also oppositely influenced. And the charge difference is around 2.5 units. Clearly, the electric field we force here is even is not small, around 5 or 10 um, electron volts for nanometer. If we change the clock from zero to a negative or a positive state, what we see is that the, there still remains a good uh, charge distinction between the two uh, ferrocenes, while the other remains uh, um, unchanged. Um, but the total charge in the two ferrocenes, in the two dots, becomes negative. And so the positive charge is transferred on the tile. If we change the clock from minus 10 to plus 10, we see a similar behavior, but in the opposite sign. So this is uh, good enough to show not only a good stability of the two um, ferrocene blocks as dots, but also the fact that if we use the clock, we can um, transform the total charge as positive or negative, and this um, is promising for what concerns the um, readability uh, of the cells, for the readout structure um, function of the cells. If we compare the same behavior of the ferrocene molecule with one of the uh, previews that we analyzed, the decatrine, that one is the more recently proposed in literature, we see a similar behavior for the two um, dots, external uh, dots, but the charge difference is much smaller. And this uh, demonstrates how the bisferocene is clearly a better choice with respect to this one, at least from the practical point of view, because the charge difference is uh, much clearer, and so um, it is clearly um, more easy to be used uh, from the an an ex uh, experimental point of view. To conclude, we, uh, here also uh, we have a simulation demonstrated the uh, dipole moment of the bisperosine um, molecule. And clearly the uh, X and Z dipole remains unchanged. On the contrary, the uh, Y dipole is um, changed more or less linearly, changing the electric field applied, and so the total um, absolute value, uh, value dipole moment shows a good stability of uh, the molecule. 
To conclude, several open issues uh, remains on uh, not only these molecules, but uh, on the whole um, QCA uh, demonstra feasibility demonstration. Um, one point is to analyze the influence uh, between nearby molecules, uh, which is the optimal distance, which is the realistic distance if we think at doing a film of molecule, and uh, how, uh, how this uh, change if we force, uh, if we mobilize the molecule on a gold or silicon substrate. Um, then also we must emulate, uh, it is necessary to emulate an input. So one ongoing work is to uh, uh, put a, not exactly a, uh, just one charge as done previously in literature or one electric field, but put a realistic molecule and so the charge distribution of one input molecule in order to see what happens to the molecule, uh, to the driven molecule. And finally, also, it is important to be able to uh, force clock in different field, in different uh, part, um, in, in a dynamic way, uh, in order to apply different clock zones. And clearly, all this must be analyzed for, um, and must be proven by experiments. Uh, so these are all the ongoing work and we uh, hope to be able to demonstrate very uh, in, in a short time that QCA could be a good choice for the future.